already have this recorded in the last session. Our two, I do this. I do these workshops twice, Tuesdays and Fridays. So this is the same workshop I did on Tuesday that was recorded. So in case um, <clears throat> you can't make it to one of the workshops, keep keep in mind that we record these and they, they go directly to our YouTube channel. Okay, so let me share my screen to show you what two students at FIT have done with this digital storytelling assignment. Okay. All right, here we go. I think this is it. Okay. So I'm also giving you a, a, a glimpse of the exhibition board. And if you're not familiar with Padlet, this is this is a tool that we have at FIT. We pay for the the we, we pay for Padlet. And if you're interested in having a Padlet account, let me know. I'll be happy to um, help you get a Padlet Padlet account. And this is this is a Padlet that I created, and this is using the template, the shelf template. And as you can see. These are uh, columns going from top to bottom. Now, I created an example column. And this is where faculty, there's a division. There's some faculty who don't like to give examples because that would ruin the creativity. Then we have faculty who do like to give examples. So I am, I'm not going to get into that war. That's up to you to decide if you want to give examples. <laughs> but in this case, I created a column uh, for an example column with my video to demonstrate to students of an exemplary, an example, an exemplary, uh, exemplary exa uh, student work, right, from a previous class or something. You know, I want to show them an example. Um, and over here at the top, you have the video, and right below, you have the bibliography or what, what it's some faculty call the script. So there's two pieces to this assignment. We have the video and the bibliography. And this is what basically what you're looking at here. This is a Padlet with all the students' names. The student finds his or her name. Under it, there's a plus sign. They click on the plus sign. They upload their video. And then they upload their the paper or the bibliography or the transcript below it. All right. So that's basically what we're looking at here. Any questions? Of, of, yeah. I have, a, I have a question, Jose. How are mm -hmm. they? How are they making the video? Like with their phone? Like, and how is the file? Like, what type of file can they upload? How are they making sure. the video? Yeah. That's a great question, and we're going to get to that. But to to briefly answer your question, uh, the next part, which I'm going to show you next, this, uh, there describes how there's a tutorial oh. that I've created for students. Okay, no problem. To, I can wait. That. Sure. <laughs> but also, I like the question because it does bring up a, an important point about the project or the assignment is you we we tend to offer a solution, but students, as we all know, we're at FIT, so a lot of students here are very savvy with media. So there's some students who are already who are very knowledgeable already of iMovie or Premiere Pro right. or Final Cut. Then those students who are much more tech savvy, uh, not tech savvy, I want to say more um, familiar with video production, they can go on their own and create, you know, the video their own way. But we do offer the solution, and I'm going to get to that next. So Jose, let me. Uh huh. Yes. I have a quick question. Um, sure. When we move to Brightspace, are we going to have access like we have in Blackboard 2 Padlet? Oh yes, we're not we're okay. not gonna lose, Good. yeah we're Good. not gonna lose, yeah Padlet, VoiceThread, um, what's the other one? Screencast-O-Matic, Adobe Great. Express, Great. Adobe, um, all of those are carrying over. So we're not losing any of our any of the tools that we have purchased. We're, we're carrying those things over. That's a great question. Thank you. Okay. All right, so let me show you. Let me show you this one. This one, this one I found fascinating. This is coming from Nancy Eater's Professor Eater's course. She teaches art history, but there's a course on Middle Eastern 
uh, forget, but it's Middle Eastern course. And so you get a lot of students covering Asia. And, you know, in this case, uh, this is uh, the, the history of bridal Mendy. And this is built on Adobe Spark, which has been rebranded now to Adobe Express. But otherwise, still the same thing, Adobe Spark, Adobe Express. And this also will carry over to Brightspace. Okay, so let me show you the turkey. So this is how, how it will look after we cook it, we season it and everything else. And let me make this in full screen so we can all look. Okay, and here we click play. The history of Bridal Mendy. This short documentary will explore the ancient history of Bridal Mendy in India a long-standing tradition that is still used today in pre-bridal ceremonies in many countries. Bridal Mendy is an important artistic tradition in Indian culture and a vital part of the marital preparations for brides-to-be. Mendy, also known as Mehandi and Henna, is a paste made from the leaves of a henna plant. Mehandi is derived from the Sanskrit word meaning Mendika. The henna plant is a perennial shrub that thrives in arid climates with well-drained soil. Typically found in Egypt, India, Iran, some tropical parts of America, and along the African coast of the Mediterranean Sea. The leaves are dried out and ground. All right, uh, so that's a little snippet. I, I don't want to play the whole thing. It's about four minutes. And we'll also, we'll talk about later about how long these videos will be. And as you can, you decide, the professor will decide how, you know, the requirements and things like duration of video, how many images um, they have to use and et cetera. But as you can see, this, there's a lot going on here. We got images, we got video, B-roll footage, there's text right here on the, on the right hand side. We have trans transitions are happening as the slides as we move from an image to another image, we have the student's voice, right? The narrator. We also have music. And, and so, and, and on top of that, we have the, the meat, is the, the research behind the project. So there's a lot of pieces that come together to this one project. Okay, and and it looks very much like a YouTube, one of those YouTube videos that you will see uh, from a content creator, uh, you know, similar in, in the pacing and, and things like that. But let me show you, let me show you one more video just to give you a different perspective. This is now from the same class. This one now is on Japanese culture, uh, Ma Marumoji and Garumoji. And this is again from Professor Eater's course. Hi, this is Samantha Ray, and today we're going to talk about the script forms of Marumoji and Gyarumoji and their use as a form of rebellion against feminine ideals in Japanese society. But before we can really analyze these scripts in context, we need to go into a very brief overview of Japanese calligraphy and the Japanese writing system. The Japanese art of calligraphy, known as Shodo, dates back to around the sixth century when it was introduced from China. However, despite its Chinese origins, Japanese calligraphy began to develop its own tradition as it adapted to use with Japanese script, and the art form became closely linked to Zen Buddhism. The tradition of Zen calligraphy is a way of bearing one's emotions and is seen as providing a path to enlightenment. So again, you know, there's 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 a there's there's what's what we call storytelling. You see that there's a you know she's building up a narrative arc, right? There's a, a beginning, middle, and end, and how these students are putting together their stories. Um, so those are two examples that I just wanted to share with you. And these are actual students at FIT. They look very professional. I mean, I've been doing video production for a very long time. Um, and before I came to FIT, we were we at Columbia. We were using this assignment. But the problem that I ran into when we were conducting uh, the digital storytelling assignment was that I had to go to the, the class and eat up at least an hour to two hours of my time teaching students how to edit an iMovie. And I said to myself, this is, this is, we should not be focusing on the technology. We should be focusing 
on the story that's being told, the research that's going into. When you're spending more time on the technology, then you know you're not doing something right. And so then I said to myself, you know, let me stop doing this until I find a tool that really is simple and straightforward to use. And then that's when I found Adobe Spark. And Adobe Spark is part of the, uh, is under the Adobe umbrella that we have at FIT. So uh, FIT pays for the Adobe suite. And so as a professor with an FIT email address, you have access to all the Adobe products. Well, not all of them, most of them. You have, you know, you have access to Adobe Premiere, Photoshop, Illustrator, Dreamweaver. And one of them, the very, the, uh, the forgotten child is Adobe Spark. And a lot of people don't know what Adobe Spark is and what is it. But Adobe Spark, I like to, I like to refer to it as the small, the, the stepchild of, you know, you, you, have, you have Photoshop, which is up there, right? But Adobe Spark can also do graphics. But at, at Photoshop, it's, there's a steep learning curve. Whereas Adobe Spark, there is no steep learning curve. Then we have Premiere for video editing, which is up there for professionals. Another steep learning curve, Adobe Spark video is this the little brother with no steep learning curve. You'll learn how to edit video, put together a, a video in no time. And we're gonna do that today. I'm gonna to try to do a little video real quick using Adobe Spark. And the third prong, so there's three prongs. You got video, graphic, and then web design. The third prong is then what we, what we refer to as Dreamweaver, right? And Adobe Dreamweaver is what we Adobe has for professionals to develop websites. Uh, but Adobe Spark has their version, which is again, no steep learning curve, no coding. Not, you know, again, this is for people who want to do quick and dirty stuff that's similar to the big brothers, but without the steep learning curve. And that and this is where then I say, well, Adobe Spark is the answer. I don't have to go into the classroom, eat up two hours of your time to teach these students how to edit the video. And that, that, was, that was the aha moment for me. I said, I'm bringing back the digital storytelling assignment here at FIT. And so we've been doing it now for the last three years that I've been here at FIT. And I gotta tell you, it's been a huge success. The students love it. And I rarely ever get technical, any technical issues or questions. I do offer my email address for you to put it onto the assignment in case students have trouble. But I'll tell you, I'll be honest with you, the only time we, I had a couple of emails was because the time that the students deadline to submit their videos, Adobe Spark was, I think, down for whatever reason, down there for maintenance. And then the students, some students couldn't upload their videos. But that was a one-time thing I can remember. I think it was like two semesters ago. All right. So any questions about what so, I've covered so far? So it sounds like you're saying, Jose, that the students get no uh, training on this. They just jump into it and do it themselves. And that's, that's fine. The, that's the beauty of it. I give them a 10 okay. minute video. And so far the last three years that we've been doing this at FIT, the 10 minute video has replaced my two hour video, my, my two hour in class at Columbia. That's great. Thanks. And, so, and, and again, the, the whole idea of what are we what what are we focusing on? Is it the technology, teaching them how to use the technology, or just actually focusing on the research of the project? And again, that should be the focus. Mm -hmm. All right. So let me show you um, a couple of things before I jump into the little demo I have for you all on how to use Adobe Spark. We do have a rubric for grading. Um, I can I will email you all these links after the workshop, but there is a rubric that I can share with you on how to grade students' work based on the use of media. Um, yeah, that's great. Yeah, definitely, this will help. I can also help you, if you're interested, I can help you convert this rubric into Blackboard so that when the grading comes, comes up, you can actually uh, use the rubric feature in Blackboard uh, that helps you grade and you just simply click on the circle 
based on the levels of achievement, you know, whether it's a A for use of media or is it a C for organization, or maybe the writing isn't so good and you just, just put F because the criteria aren't met. So just keep in mind, I will send you the rubric too so that you can use it. And if you ever need help implementing it into Blackboard, well, we end up, we end up gonna go, we, we're going to end up in Brightspace very soon. Uh, so these rubrics will also carry over to Brightspace. Um, this is the video tutorial that I created for students. It's about 10 minutes. Let me just show you that real quick before I jump into the demo. Hello, and welcome to this video tutorial. Uh, so basically, uh, this this tutorial, in, in less than 12 minutes, I, in about 12 minutes, I show the students how to, number one, go through the four steps. And that's, we're gonna, that's what I'm going to show you next. You know, step one, choose an artist or the topic they have to choose. We use a Google Doc where the students go into a Google Doc link. They click on a link to a Google Doc. The student puts their name. They choose a topic. Let's say they have to pick an architect from the 20th century. And then the second step is then watch the video tutorial. Then step three, do the research and create the video. And then step four, take the video, the link to the video and drop it, insert the video link into the, the Padlet, right? They have to find their name like we did here, locate your name. And here you would have all the, your full roster going from left to right. The student locates his or her name. They would click on the plus sign. And that's the last step. They upload their video and they upload the transcript to the Padlet. The other thing I also have, I'm going to share this with you, is I'm also going to give you all the instructions. And again, this is collaborative effort from FIT faculty coming from art history to modern language. It's been a, a, a collaborative effort from, from different departments. Uh, this goes credit to Lorenza Smith, who is the first person I worked with at FIT when I joined uh, three years ago. She was the first person we did, we did this project on in an art history department. And here she's giving away or allowing anyone to take the instructions and you can make it your own. Right here, part one is choose the artist or the architect. This is a Google Doc. Here is the link. Part two, watch the video tutorial. And then here, part three is uh, submit your video to the Padlet. But here is the good stuff. Right here is here. Here you can really gather some good information. You can copy this and make it your own. Here she talks about. The video will have to include about 15 images and will focus on three or four works. A very soft musical background is suggested. Pretend you're making a video for YouTube. Speak fluidly and audibly with a lively intonation. So you see, there's a lot of good stuff here that you can just copy this so that when you create this assignment, you can just make this your own. Then, this is credit to Nancy Eater. These are her instructions. You can copy these and make them your own too. She also has her list of tips and uh, you know, be creative with your video. I'm counting on everyone's creativity to shine. You know, little things like that really motivates the student. Um, here, her her paper. She wants an MLA. She wants a bibliography in MLA format. And then she gives them the link to the Purdue Online Writing Lab, which shows them you know, how to do the MLA format. Um, here she has the step five, which is then to upload your bibliography. And again, that bibliography can come from Google Docs, Microsoft Word, Padlet, Padlet will take anything. It will take PDFs, Microsoft Word, Google, it takes everything. So whatever your student, Keynote, PowerPoint, whatever they did it on, you can they can upload that directly to Padlet. This here is Nancy's Eater's uh, grading rubric. Again, feel free to use this if you want to. This is her. These are the criteria that she's that he that she has set up for this assignment. Feel free to use that if you want. 
And then here I have the examples that I showed you today. These are the links to the Bridal Mendy and the Marumoji video. All right, so I will also share this via email. I will send you this along with the rubric and the video tutorial. Um, what else I have to share? I think those are the main things. And then the last thing I'm going to share with you on the last few 10 minutes, I want to show you how to access Adobe Spark. And let me, let me just show you how to make a quick video in the less than five minutes. So to access Adobe Spark, once you've logged into Blackboard, you can find Adobe Spark up here in the top right corner. It's one of the shortcuts along with Padlet right here. So you can click on Spark, and that will take you directly to Adobe Spark. So let me go ahead and click on that. You can also go to um, spark.adobe.com or express.adobe.com, and that would also take you to the same place. OK. Now, this is the part that I always joke about, because FIT, we, we, we're like Fort Knox. Anything that we, we, any software that we have for free that we offer to our faculty and students is like under Fort Knox. We highly, highly protect it. So to log in, make sure you log in with school account. Right? And I, I cover this, I cover these steps in the student video tutorial. I teach the students how to get here. So if, if you forget, you can also watch that video and it, it helps you uh, how to log into your Adobe Spark or Adobe Express, you know, they just rebranded a few months ago. Now here, you have to enter your FIT email address, right? It has to be your e FIT email address. It can't be your personal, right? And just click Continue. Now it's asking you, is it a personal account or is it the school account? We want to go with the school account. If you go through the personal, you're going to get a free account. Make sure you go through the school account so you can have the pro account. OK, and now again, FIT is asking you one more time. And this time, it's your username, not the full email address. It's only your first name underscore your last name with your password. All right, that's, this is the last step, I promise you. <laughs> and now you're in. So now you're you you broke Fort Knox. You're in. This is the pro account. You this is you have access to everything from here. Um, here you have what I mentioned before. Remember the three prongs? You got graphics, you got video, web design. I mean everything is here. You know if you ever wanted to make a a, a a flyer for your class. I mean, everything. I don't know if, if people have used Canva before here. Canva is another tool, but this is similar to Canva. It's that easy how to make graphics here. But this is a pro account, so you get much more features, right? Because it's a it's it's a paid account. Okay, from here, you go to the plus sign on the top left corner. All right, so we're going to click on the plus sign. Look at that, you, you, get the, you get so many options here, right? Want to build a logo, want to build a flyer, a collage. I mean, it goes on. But these are the three that I mentioned. This is the web page, here's the video, and then these are all graphics. We're just going to focus on video today, right? Because this is what your students are going to be creating. You're going to be creating a video. So your students are going to click on video. And here is where the student has to create a title for the video. Let's say I chose Abraham Lincoln as my topic. And then I put my name next to it. Uh, you, might, you may have a naming convention uh, requirement. So this is where the student will have to put the naming convention for the project. These are all templates of how to tell a story. And they're scaffolded for your students. A hero's journey, promote an idea, tell what happened. 
But I like to start from scratch because I want to make my own story. But if, if you do want to have a, a, a scaffolding and help you with your narrative arc, you can use these templates for that purpose. But I usually tell students just to start from scratch. Any questions so far about what we covered? No. <laughs> so if you use PowerPoint before, this is straightforward. It's very simple, very simple to use. Here we have the stage, right? This is what's going to be shown as your uh, as when your video plays. Here at the bottom are your slides. As you can see, currently I have three slides right now. And if I want to add another slide, I just click the plus, and now I have four slides, right? Here at the stage, I, I could add a video, I could add text, I can add a photo, I can add an icon. Here at the top, I can preview the project. I can I can share with another student. If this is a group project and you're you have three students per group and you have a group leader, the group leader can create the project, invite two other students to collaborate on, and they can work on the project asynchronously or synchronously but most likely it will be asynchronous, right? So that's how you can do a group project out of this, if that's what you want. And this is the download button. This, is, this will download the video as an, as an MP4 file to your computer, okay? And on the right-hand side, we have layout, theme, resize, and music. And I'm gonna cover, we're gonna cover those in a second. But for my first slide, I want to make this a title slide. So I'm going to choose title on the right-hand side over here. And I'm going to call this Abraham Lincoln. At the bottom, I'll just say by Jose Diaz. That's my first slide. All right. And notice that my title slide is on the second slide. But I really want this to be the first slide. You can simply click, left click on the slide and just drag it to the beginning. Very simple. You can move things around that easy. See that? And that's how you reorder the slides. For my second slide, I want to do a split screen. And Adobe Spark has is great with Creative Commons. So I want to put an image of Abraham Lincoln. I can just go to photo. I can upload my own photo or I can take a photo using my webcam, but Adobe Spark has find free photos. This is uh, photos that are curated with Creative Commons license in mind. So you don't have to worry about uh, uh, you know, copyrights, infringements, and things like that. This is all free to use, so the students don't have to worry about copyrights. Here we go, I got a picture of Abraham Lincoln. Let's use this one. And you notice it's cropping his head a little bit. You can simply click, click on the pencil tool and minimize it if you want to, or make it bigger. All right, so you can choose how to uh, minimize, uh, decrease the size. Notice this is again, you know, very template-based. Everything is very template-based. And this is why the the, the uh, learning curve is not steep, because it's all about plus signs. Everywhere you see a plus sign, plus here or plus there, is where you can add. It's very straightforward and simple. User, It's very intuitive. On the right-hand side, I want to add text. All right, and so, oops, yeah, I want to add text. So I want to do... Abraham Lincoln, Abraham never told a lie. <laughs> I don't know, I'm horrible with this, told a lie. Okay, that's, that's, that's my text. I can increase or decrease the text size from here. Um, but let's say I'm not happy with the colors and the fonts. If we go to the theme section, these are all pre-made themes. So if I change, from the light to the dark, I simply click on the dark, and it changes. 
the font changes, the theme changes, the transition from slide to slide will change. Okay. If, so, Jose, huh? can you, is there another way to change the font style without choosing this kind of thing? Yes, thank you. I was about to go into that. So the, the pencil tool okay. right next to it allows you to edit that theme. If, if, if you want the font from the light theme to go on the dark theme and, or vice versa, you go into edit. And then here you're creating your own theme here with the font. You can choose a font and the colors. Look at that. Fonts are here. Colors are here. And so you're editing that theme to match. And then once you click done, it saves your theme. And then you can come back and now you you customize that theme to your to your liking so for those students who are particular on the font and color if let's say i want the ele elevate font with the blue color i can just do that go here and customize it can you show that one more time i didn't have my screen like all the way sure not a problem so if, if, if let's say i'm using right now the medium theme but i want to use the elevate font right so i go into the medium I click on the uh, pencil, right? Okay, thank you. Sure, sure. And then I can go here and then change the font. And now you've customized that theme to your liking. Now keep in mind, this is all cloud-based. You're not downloading software to your computer. This is all cloud-based. So, so if you have a slow internet, you know, like. For me, I'm struggling a little bit when I click on the links and things are slowly opening. But we just keep in mind everything is cloud-based, so you're not downloading the software to your computer. All right, so I'm happy with this theme. I'm going to go with the medium on dark, on the black font. And um, the next thing I want to show you is, so we did the layout, we did theme. Resize, you really don't have to touch the resize. This is if you want to go widescreen or maybe like vertical. Like if you're doing a video for TikTok, you might want to go with Square or Instagram or what is it? Uh, TikTok. <laughs> TikTok will give you the squared one. Wide screen will be more like YouTube. So that that changes the resolution of the video. OK, I'm going to leave music for last because I want to do one more thing with you all because we're running out of time. We're almost done. So I have, I have uh, let's leave it to three slides. But now I want to narrate, right? I want to put my voice over the slides. And this is what the microphone icon here is at the bottom. Now with Adobe Spark or Adobe Express, I got to keep you. I got to transition from Spark to Express because now it's Express. Um, but with Adobe Express, each slide is there is a limit to 30 seconds per recording. So, so it's more more like a catch up. Kachapucha presentation. Those are the, you know, you got 30 seconds to present, blah, blah, blah. And you, you, you got to do, you know, if, if that's what you're looking for, you could do 30 seconds per slide just to train your students to be able to tell their story directly without going on a rant and just, you know, giving you, just give me what I need to hear. If you're in, if you're that kind of professor, you want to get that information straight out of your kids, you do that. But if, if you want them, if you don't want, restrict them to 30 seconds, what you can do is you can tell them to duplicate the slide. Let's say my second slide, duplicate it, and now you got 60 seconds. That's the workaround for the 30 seconds. If, 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 you, if, if you don't want to really pressure them to get good at articulating their thoughts in 30 seconds, if you don't care about that, and you can tell them, you know what, duplicate the slide. Now you got 60 seconds. And no one can tell because as you transition from one slide to the other, it's the same picture. So you're not going to even notice. It's a, It won't even transition. It just goes to the next picture. It's the same picture. It doesn't change. So there is no jump cut or anything like that. Any questions? No. No. All right. So let's finish up. So now I'm going to, I'm going to voice, I'm going to add my voice. Let me delete this slide because I really want to challenge myself. I only want to do 30 seconds. I'm not, even, I'm not even going to do 30 seconds. Again, it's just for demonstration purposes. So what I tell the students is when they're ready to record, you have to left click on this icon, the microphone button here, hold it, 
as if you were doing a walkie talkie, you're holding the button. I always give myself about half a second before I start talking because I don't want to clip my voice in the beginning or the end. So I hold, I hold the last half second and I don't say anything. This will be some half second of dead air, so I don't clip my voice. All right, here we go. My name is Jose Diaz, and I will pre I will be presenting on Abraham Lincoln. All right, so I mumble there a little bit, and but it's okay. Um, you, I can always re, uh, restart or redo it if I if I wish to, or I can simply by clicking on the record button, I can just record over it. All right. So let me just do that again. My name is Jose Diaz, and I will be presenting on Abraham Lincoln. And I let go after like a half a second to a second. The next slide. And again, you don't want your students to be reading off their slides. But in this case, for demonstration purposes, I'm going to be reading whatever I because I don't really have much to say. But, but again, that's something you want to keep an eye out. Tell your students, don't read from your slides. It's a horrible thing to do. We also recommend giving students a link to the reading and writing and speaking studio. They're amazing people. Uh, Brian Fallon and Steve and Sarah Blazer. Students can create an appointment with them and they can help them with their presentation skills. All right, so here we go, my next recording. Abraham Lincoln never told a lie. I let go. So I did my two recordings. All right, and so let's preview what I got. Let's see how I sound. So on the top here, I, you click on preview. My name is Jose Diaz, and I will be presenting on Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln never told a lie. All right, well, so there's music there that I never added. It's kind of really dramatic, which I don't want it to be too dramatic. But by default, by default, uh, Adobe Spark adds music. So that's why I left this little box, the last uh, tab for last, because Adobe Spark provides a lot of uh, free uh, music for you to use, uh, you know, Creative Commons. These are all free to use. Uh, students can also upload their own music by clicking Add My Music, and you can upload an MP3 file directly to Adobe Spark. The music was a little bit loud, so I'm going to lower the volume there. Maybe, maybe that much. Or you can just turn off the music by turning off the music. But if I play it now, you'll notice that it should sound a little better. The music doesn't overpower my voice. Oops. I think I took out my audio by doing that. But anyway, that's how students can if I turn off the music, it should play now. But this is how students can add music. If that's something that you want to want them to do. Oops, I think I've got rid of my audio by doing that. <laughs> well, but but you see, so this is how this is how the students will then add music, choose a song, or upload their music by going to the music first. And all this is covered in the video tutorial. I show them how to add music, how to control the volume, and 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 therefore uh, and 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 so and so forth. Now that the video is complete and done, and I'm happy with my video, then you click on share and publish. You can also send it to Google Drive or add a collaborator. So I'm going to go ahead and publish the video. And I'm going to click Create Link. This is going to take a few minutes, based depending on how long the video is. And this is the link that we're going to take. And then we're going to paste it to the Padlet exhibition, right? Because you, you want to exhibit all students work, right? We want them all to see each other's work. And maybe you might want them to comment on each other's videos, right? That this could become a, a threaded conversation, right? Uh, have students critique each other's work. So here's the link. I'm going to copy the link. And I'm going to go here to Padlet. I'm going to go to, let's say I'm Tom, and then I click on Tom. By the way, this is a great way to know who did the work and who didn't do the work. Right, because if I see that Tom has nothing under his name, I was thinking that too. Yeah. Yeah, this I'm telling you. I, what I do is I go to what I do is I go to on Blackboard. I go to let me show you what I do. 
when I do the Padlet, I go to the Users tab on your on your course. Uh, here at the bottom, I go to Users. And then what I do is, this is my roster. I start from the top. I just copy. I go to the Padlet. I do one by one. This takes me about five minutes. You know, I add a section, I, and then I paste. And it, it goes by last name. As you can see, Bishop is B. It goes by the last name, alphabetical order. So then Bishop will be first, and then Blatchford, Couples, Diaz, and so forth. And that's how I, that's how I copy the roster from my users on Blackboard to then I bring that over to Padlet. And if, if I'm doing more of these assignments, all I do is I do a remake of the master. So I don't have to enter the mm. student's names again. That's great. And that's it. So I have a, a cookie cutter. Now I have, I, have a, I have a master roster for HA112. I do remake, and now I have homework number one. I already have my template set out. That's great. Okay. So that's another tip, another tip for you. So here's Tom, and Tom is happy. Hey, I did my work. So I go to plus. I click on the link icon. And then I just paste the Express Adobe Express link here. Oops, <laughs> I have Margaret Bishop. Uh, sorry. Let me go back to the uh, video, and I copy the link, and then I go back into the Padlet, and I paste the link to the video here. And then here I click Publish, and there is my Abraham Lincoln video. Right, and so here the bibliography will go here. And if I have, let's say, a Google document, let me see if I have a Google Doc. Uh, I don't want to put my tax information there. <laughs> um, um, I don't have any document, but basically, you can go to your Google Docs. We get it. Yeah. And yeah. copy the and, link. Yeah. <laughs> and then, and Jose, the to, can I ask a question? I noticed, like, usually in working with things on Blackboard. I always have to embed it in order for like the preview to come up, but it seems like this time you just did the link and it still has a little preview and everything works fine. Sure. That's up to you to decide. I have started to lean more to the link than to embed because I'm starting to realize that when you do, when you embed a Padlet, the students are logging, are not logging in. So it's coming up as anonymous. Yeah, when, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so I started, I stopped embedding and now I'm just doing links. And because if you do the link, it automatically logs the student in and it's not anonymous anymore. Okay, thank you for that. Sure. And Jose, I have yeah. another question. <clears throat> sure. In this um, type of thing you just showed us, can the students import a video and embed it? Up and upload it into the Adobe Spark? Like, let's say oh. they wanted to uh, film themselves talking for a moment yeah. or two. Can oh, they do that? That's, a, that's an excellent, excellent question. I, I forgot to cover that. Thank you for that. So, okay, great. yes, you can. So, under remember, the, remember when we had the blank stage and we had right. these four options? Here, video, and that's where your MP4 file will go up. So here I was I was working on this video on German youth, you know, back in Nazi Germany and how the so you know they would do these exercise tra you know trainings and so here let's try this I don't know if this will work but here's an MP4 file. Oh so this video oh so I have to convert it okay so when it's not taking MP4 it will probably have to be uh, it had to oh wait okay it has to be converted okay so I, I would have to. So there is a, there is some limitation on how, which file types can be uploaded, um, but you know the student can either upload a GIF or an MOV. I, um, I feel like I've tried it, and there was like it all. What, there was something about converting, and I think it has to be pretty short. I don't think it can be long. I'm, yes. Yeah. So I encountered the was, same problem. That's what I was wondering because of the thirty second limit. Exactly. Uh, I guess there would be that same limit on the video, right? Uh, yeah, so that's what happened to me. So what happened was I had a I had a one minute video I uploaded, and then what they do is once you upload the video, a cropping tool comes up, and then you have to crop it to the thirty seconds. Oh, okay. 
Yeah, that's what happened to me when I uploaded a video on my last on my last uh, workshop. I, I actually had a video that worked, and and I did upload it, but then I had to do the crop to how uh, the thirty seconds. Okay, that's good. Uh, again, I'm not saying that this is again this is not professional. Again, this is not a professional tool like Premiere, iMovie, or Final Cut. Again, the reason why Adobe Express is the chosen tool for me is because there is no steep learning curve. I can put a random student in here and without my tutorial, they can most likely will figure it out on their own. And again, the whole purpose is the research of the topic. I don't really want to spend you know, too much time on teaching them the tool. I really want them to focus on creativity, on the, their voice, how to present, how to articulate their thoughts, how to tell a story and how to research. There's another component that I'm not going to go into because I'm already out of time, but there's a second component on the research methodology of the whole process. And that, and that is another Padlet that I built. And now this is a full semester project where it's a one-on-one -on -one Padlet. It's not a one-to-many. This will be an individualized Padlet where each student will have to do the research methodology each, each shelf template, each column has a research topic they have to cover from the beginning of the semester till the end. And they're going to use that research then to put together the video on Adobe Spark. That's a separate whole part of the, of, you know, doing the research methodology. Uh, and what you're doing with that is you're scaffolding the research process by creating these shelf templates. And then you're you're helping them break up the research process into smaller chunks, so that mm -hmm. when they're ready to put the big project together, they have all the research done in the Padlet, and then they're putting it all together. Here they can search for articles. Here they can search for media for the B-roll footage. Here they're gonna work on the bibliography. Here they're gonna, and these are all, uh, do, they all have due dates, so they cannot really proceed until because these are all aligned to what, what you're covering during the full semester. So these are all aligned to your lesson plan, right? For your whole semester. So it's, it's another topic. It's a much more deeper thing on research methodology. I don't wanna go, I'm already down to five minutes, but, but that's another topic. If you're interested in that, come by, I'm gonna do another workshop on research methodologies and how to use Padlet to then help your students break down the process of researching for a project. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's pretty much it. I mean, this has been really successful. The students love it. Every time I, we do, I faculty give me the student feedback. It's all high marks. Um, if you are going to use it, I'll be happy to help you along the way if you need my help. And I'll be happy to hear from you if you have new ideas, because again, this, is, this has been a collaborative effort. Um, like I showed you here in the document, these are all faculty at FIT putting in the work and mm -hmm. sharing it. You know, Mario Valero is another person I forgot to credit here, but Mario has been another person who's contributed a lot of his time to help faculty with the digital storytelling assignment. No, um, I think it's good. And actually, I just wanted to say, Jose, too, that I had um, come to a different one of your workshops where a different teacher had shown us Spark, and I did use it um, in my online class. I had the kids. Um, do their final presentation in Spark, but I had them do it as a, a slideshow. So now I felt like this is great. I think this time for their final exam, they could do, you know, a, more of a video and for it and explain our final project. Yeah, I gotta tell you, it's it's their it's it's their language nowadays. These students are engulfed with TikTok, Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Facebook, it's all video, it's all video. And it's, and it's, and it's like, you know, feed me, feed me, feed me more content, you know, and, and this is the world they live in. And, but if we take advantage, it's like what we call, um, chocolate, um, uh, what is it called? The best, um, like chocolate spinach or chocolate, um, you know, some vegetable you're feeding them, but you're pouring chocolate over so they could eat it. Yeah, they got it. <laughs> I got it. You know, it's like 
you know, hey, yeah, you're learning something from here. You know, even though you're having so much fun, you know, you think you're making like a TikTok video or something, but hey, this we're doing research. We're learning. We're teaching you how to be able to do an elevator pitch in 30 seconds. Or, you know, tell me, tell me what matters. You know, in 30 seconds here. You know, you know, soft skills like that, and you know, yeah, and, and you know, it's fun. And so, and and, and then on, on the on the on the teacher side. You know, you 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 know, grading papers is, you know, I have I have faculty doing eight to ten papers or more per semester. So, you know, I always say the teacher is is the glue to the whole thing. If you're burned out, there is no class. You are the you're all the, the most important piece of the puzzle. And so, you know, um, it's a lot of work. And I always tip my hat out to teachers because. I don't know how you all do it, so my respect to you all. <laughs> You're underappreciated. That's the, that's that's for one. That's that's definitely. You know, you're molding the future. <laughs> so, my hat. Well, thanks, to you all. Jose. This has been really great. I have some ideas that I'm going to start working on. I mean, I like the idea of um, you know students being able to maybe film a pitch for themselves when they're, you know, thinking about when they're about to graduate, because I teach an eight semester class with an internship in fashion design. And I think that would be a great ending component for the class. Mm, I love it. I love the idea. And, and then Karen, you can also, you can have a, a pitch at the, the first day of class. And then you save it till the end. We all watch at the end and see how the growth has happened. You know, oh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. They can do their learning <laughs> objectives, uh, talk about their learning objectives and how they met them during the semester. That would be great. Yeah. I love that. Really, I love your idea. That would be a nice way to see the growth. And they see it themselves. I was like, wow, I was this person from, you know, <laughs> from day one to the last day of class. Let's see how much I used to do it at Columbia. We used to do a poll before the unit, let's say, you know, week one, usually to catch the misconceptions, right? The preconceived misconceptions, right? We would ask us basic question what did you think about the civil war and then they watch the video the lecture then they do the quiz they do the discussions and then we ask the poll again and then they see a live poll and you see how things changed from day one to day two yeah that would be fascinating yeah that's a great idea yeah share with me you know if you if you decide to use it i would love you know later on we we, we do a faculty show and tell Mm -hmm. And uh, we bring in faculty from all departments, and we all share what we've done, and it's a way to learn from each other. I would love to, yeah. you know, I'll let, let me, you know. Yeah. yeah, shoot me an yeah. email. Yeah. Can I ask you a quick question on another topic, slightly? <laughs> sure. Just, I, oh, while I have you there, um, when I I teach a model drawing class, and um, I was wondering. I'll say, goodbye. If I'll say goodbye, you guys, and let you and let you talk. Bye. Thank you. Thanks, Jose. Bye-bye. Take care. I teach a model drawing class, and my ideal way, if I'm doing it remotely, would be to have two screens. One would be the model feed, you know, screen, and the mm -hmm. other one would be me drawing. So, it would, you know, if I could have two different screens showing at the same time, is there any software or that I can do that in? <laughs> yes. Yes, you can. Uh, we have Screencast-O-Matic. Screencast-O-Matic would do it. That you could show two at the same time. Yes. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah, Screencast-O-Matic is pretty, pretty flexible. Also advanced, much more advanced. Uh, the last workshop, someone had asked me, "Hey, Jose, why can I can I just use Adobe Spark to create my videos?" I said, "Of course, but remember, Screencast-O-Matic." has much more advanced features like you can have a talking head of you speaking and then a second shot of the screen and that could be what you're talking about which is then you can either draw on the main right. screen and then to have your talking head like a, remember back in the day we had the picture in picture TVs yeah but the that would have to be something that I had recorded right it wouldn't be something that I could have be doing live no no live live screen has yeah, Screencast-O-Matic would do it live, right? So Screencast-O-Matic will get two, 
it will get it will get the feed from your screen capture, and then it will also right. get the feed from your webcam, and and then in real time, the students can see your talking head and also see your drawings on the main screen. Not only that, but Screencast-O-Matic will let you do live switching. For example, if you're done with the drawing, oh, yeah. Yeah. And, then, and then it come back to your talking head. Yeah. And you, you could do and that. I could, still, and I could still have the image of the model feeding live into it at the same time. And then, and then switch back. You can then switch back to just the model, the drawing, or go back yeah. to picture picture. Yes. And how would I, would that be through the LMS or how would I show that to the, how would the students be able to see it? So you, so the, the way that would work, this is synchronous or are you going to do a recording of it live or is it just? My live? thought was that it would be synchronous. I mean, I, the recording part I know how to do, but I was thinking about it because in re, when we were teaching remotely, I couldn't do that. And it was, I had to switch back and forth between um, I just what I basically showed was my camera with me drawing and I printed out a photograph of the model that was still so they could see them both at the same time. Oh, oh. so so doing it live, depending on the, on the conferencing tool that you're using, you might even not need Screencast-O-Matic. So if you're doing it live in real time, synchronous, yeah. you can if you're using um, I, WebEx could do it. Zoom could do it, and Google Meet. No, Google Meet, I'm not sure. I don't think Google Meet would do it. No, I don't think so. No, Google Meet, I don't think Google, I gotta check. I, I forget what Google Meet, but WebEx would do it. WebEx, and, okay. Yeah. And, and then, right. then therefore, if you do it through WebEx, then you don't have to worry about Screencast-O-Matic. Screencast-O-Matic will work perfect for you for, for a pre-recorded, asynchronous. Yeah, right. Video. Yeah, yeah. Right. Uh -huh. So then, okay. so then, yeah, WebEx, WebEx will give you then the talking head and the screen capture in real time. Okay, great. Good to know. Thank you so much. And thanks sure. for this session. It was really interesting. Yeah, no, thank you for coming by. And uh, again, if, if you ever need help, I'm here. I'll be happy to jump in Excellent. and help you. Excellent. Have right. a great weekend. Take care, take care, Karen. You too. And I'll email the, I'll email the links later on. Great. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Take care.